If you are a security tester or a bug bounty hunter and you come across the OAuth workflow um, using by, used by any application, what are the security risks that you want to uh, test? What are the things that like you know you may want to see that there is a way to bypass the authentication or misuse uh, client authentication and something? So that's what we are going to discuss in this session. I'm going to tell you what are the what is the OAuth workflow because this is very very common on the internet uh, these days. So what is the OAuth workflow? How do we identify if the application is using the OAuth workflow? Then we are going to see why there are security risk and then we'll also see the example. So if you like all of this free content, please hit the like button. Uh, it's just going to take a second. It will be uh, like you know very much helpful to me. And uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, for the weekly episode. So now let's get into it. So you must have seen this dialog box, uh, like you know, where it says Google Docs would like to read, send, delete, and manage your email or manage your contacts and stuff like that. So whenever, uh, like you know, you see something like this, uh, it it mainly implies that it is using the OAuth workflow. So OAuth commonly used as a way for internet users to grant website or application access to their information on other websites, but without giving them the password. That's the key here. We are not giving them the password. The mechanism is used by Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter to permit the users to share information about their accounts with the third party applications or websites. So I'm sure you have seen this many, many times, like uh, seen like, you know, on the Facebook, uh, where if you are installing an app, like a game, and it likes to uh, read your information such as like you know, your profile information your name and photos etc so that's where the OAuth is usually uh, like mostly used now what are the actors so of course when you are using as a as a like you know normal user you won't see uh, like what is the background process but we must understand this if you don't know the actors it's very hard for you to find the vulnerabilities because each actor could have multiple issues, multiple security, bring multiple security vulnerabilities. So let's first try to understand what are the actors involved in this entire workflow. So first actor is resource owner. In this case, myself. So if I'm the Facebook user, I'm the resource owner because I own all the resource which I have on my Facebook profile. Then you have the resource server. Uh, I took an example of Google Docs, but if we stick with the Facebook, yeah, then resource server is the Facebook server. So uh, all the resources that I own as a resource owner on the Facebook, so then server is of course the Facebook server. Then there's a client. Now client app is any application that wants to access your profile, your, your documents, your profile picture, etc. So there are a lot of photo editing apps you might have seen, which like, you know, connects with the Facebook and, and, and try to uh, read the profile information or, or post a picture behalf of you, etc. On Instagram and stuff so this is any client application who wants to read my photos from the Facebook and the authorization service server is the main engine of the OAuth and that's the engine which does this handshake and authentication so let's look at the workflow first resource owner I want to access some application which like you know let's say photo editing gap which wants to read the photos from my my Facebook or Instagram profile and then wants to edit it so first, uh, when I try to access it, it will say, okay, can you go and get the access? So it will redirect me to the authorization server. And this server uh, could be like, you know, uh, one of the server which is hosted by Facebook in this case. Now Facebook is going to obviously ask me username and password. Once I give them, it will issue an authorization code. Now I, my client application, this is a very key item here. Once the client application gets the authorization code, it's going to get the issuer token. It will exchange the token. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about like what these tokens are and what are the different types of token later on in the in this in this session. But but right now, once the, you get the authorization code, it exchanges for the access token. And now, client application has this access token to access the data from my Facebook profile uh, which is like you know the resource server the Facebook server now if you see each actor and each workflow has various different threats that you can call out uh, simpler like you know a uh, few things I would say is what if the resource owner in the first step access the service and this client application what if this client application itself is malicious 
that's a very big threat right anyone can can host like a application and and ask user to get the permission to the facebook now the second threat you can see is when the authorization servers issues the authorization code and the access token how is this client application sometime this client application also stored this access token but what is that stored insecurely what is the time limit of these tokens and etc so there are a lot of threats in in this entire workflow now we'll we'll see this like why these are threats and and how, like you know how you can exploit it later in the section but but when you when you look at this workflow try to like you know recreate or try to create a threat model in your mind like what what are the things which could go wrong now next thing is how do you identify uh, that the application using OAuth authentication of course like you know if that ui shows up then you can easily uh, manage to find it but what if there is no ui if it's just like you know purely api based then you need to find it some way so typically you will in whenever there is an OAuth authentication you will always see first request being authorization endpoint and in that endpoint there are three key elements one is actually four but i'm going to skip fourth one for time being we'll we'll talk that later on but but the first one is client id this is the id from the registration process so for example like you know here there is a sample request get authorization client id is 12345 redirect uri is the url of the client application suppose i hosted an application and i hosted malicious application then yeah redirect uri will be malicious app.com slash callback and this is like you know uh, the the url which the resource or the authorization server will call back with the authorization code now the response type is server expects to receive an authorization code so this is like you know we say okay we, we are expecting the token scope is obviously the scope uh, for example facebook.com or, or google whichever uh, resource server that we are we are like you know in scope for this and state is some random numbers <clears throat> we'll talk about this one later on about the state because this is a key uh, item in the OZ workflow and, and it could result in one of the vulnerability if not done properly <clears throat> now question is if this OAuth is so standard uh, like you know document RFC is out specification like everything is so documented why does the vulnerability arise as simple as the specification is very vague uh, of course like you know uh, there are, there are like a lot of protocols and and they have defined how to use it etc but again goes back on how you perceive it how how you how you use those protocols so same thing OAuth specifications are very vague and then second thing some of the security settings are obviously provided but those are optional so it it doesn't follow the secure by default principle so that's the uh, second reason the third one reason is they do not have very few uh, like you know they have very few security features so sometimes what you have to do is developers need to add their own security features for example input validation it doesn't provide input validation when when you call the authorization server uh, or when you call the resource owner with this workflow with the access token there is no there is no like input validation by default and of course uh, we all know like if you go back here we have seen previously how you can change this url like redirect uri to cause so many different attacks so this is on the developers to fix and then lastly all of this data the access token the authorization token everything is sent via browser so think of all the browser attacks think of like you know what 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 can you do to steal this access token and stuff like that so there are there, there are these are the main issues like you know there, there are a lot of vulnerabilities there are a lot of zero days uh, have also been uh, like if you just google it you will find a lot of lot of issues which are uh, related to OAuth but specifically I want to talk about one issue which is CSRF and OAuth and the reason I want to chat about it is because this is very easy to find easy to spot uh, without like you know having much knowledge now if you go back and look at our sample request one thing I did not talk about much is the state and you see there is bunch of like you know random numbers state parameter is like a hash uh, random string or, or you can call it as an anti CSRF token 
Now this one, uh, as the name suggests, will prevent the CSRF vulnerability. However, this is optional. It doesn't, not every uh, authorization server has to have state uh, parameter. So what happens if you find a URL with the authorization endpoint which does not have a state parameter, you can easily conduct a CSRF using the auth workflow. So how that suppose I as a user wants to access like my bugs application uh, which could be or could not be malicious. So first of all what it will do is okay if you want to use this application this application needs to connect with my bank for some reason to get my let's say current balance or something. So this my bugs application will send me to the authorization server of the memorial bank. Now when I go to this bank of course it's going to ask me to log in if I'm not logged in already and then once I log in it will give me the authorization code and once I get this authorization code or my box application will get the authorization code it will exchange that for the access token and this access token will obviously just scope to the memorial bank so this is all good this is all like you know uh, proper workflow and once you get the access token of course my box can easily like you know access my current balance but what if like you know if i as a bad guy i also have same like think of it same as like you know how the csrf works csrf attack works i already have access to this memorial bank and uh, i like i also have access to the my buck application which i can invoke the request to memorial bank now when the memorial bank gives me the authorization code back i copy out that request all right and then i i intercept like i stop the interception and and uh, like and i stop everything now the other user or the victim what i do is i send that request with my authorization code to him and suppose that user is already locked in to this memorial bank what it will do it will now get the access token to uh, for the my my authorization code so now essentially his profile is attached to the my book application which is mine uh, like you know for the my profile and now his current balance will be visible to me so this is just like you know a simplest example of why have it not having any like because right now there is no way for authorization server to check whether the request was coming from me or someone else without this random number if they keep this random number then it can match whether the request was coming out from uh, uh, like you know myself or, or the other victim so that's the main benefit of having this state parameter now this is the like you know the easiest of attack there are a lot of other attacks possible as i said like you want to check how the client application is storing uh, the access token sometimes what a client application would do uh, let me just go back here to properly explain you so sometimes what client application will do it will have all the like you know uh, to just to avoid to ask user to log in every time what it will do is it will create a session cookie based on the access token uh, for this user and it will store in the browser or it will store somewhere which is not secure maybe the cookie does not have secure attributes someone can steal it uh, using the cross site scripting and then you can use that uh, token to be able to get access to the uh, like you know the resource server so these are like some of the other vulnerabilities which are already out there which you can easily google but i wanted to just explain you this so you have your concept clear on, on how the entire OAuth workflow works now last thing we haven't talked yet about is the tokens so there are two types of token one there is an access token which we definitely saw so once this like you know in this workflow when the mybuck application uh, receives the access token from the authorization server it can use this access token to access the bank and my get my current balance so these are short lived so maybe few hours few minutes etc and you cannot revoke this it just times out so you have to wait so suppose this token is valid for an hour and and uh, this token is stolen somehow maybe because this is being passed in the in the url and somehow the attacker got this then you cannot revoke this access token they will be able to access all the resources until this token expires so this is another like you know threat scenario uh, refresh token so there is another refresh token as well 
So refresh token is, is different. It's a long lived token. And whenever this access token expires, of course, you do not want uh, like, you know, a client to log in again every time. So it will go to the authorization server. So for example, if you see in this diagram, so authorization endpoint uh, will grant you like, you know, the refresh token. So you call this endpoint uh, or to token endpoint. And whenever this access token expires, it will go back to the refresh token. The refresh token will call the endpoint again and it will get the new access token for another hour. So that, that's the main use of the refresh token. And this token can be revoked uh, because these are usually long lived uh, depending on like, you know, what kind of application. Sometimes it's years. So yeah, these are very long lived. And what, what are like, you know, how does this token look like? So typically it looks like JWT, JSON Web Token. Uh, it could be something else, but typically it seems like those are like, you know, JSON Web Tokens. So this may also give you a little bit of idea on when, when you find like, you know, auth uh, workflow in your application. So I think uh, my goal was today to make sure you guys understand what the OAuth workflow is, why there are security vulnerabilities. If something is uh, specified and everyone is adopting, that doesn't mean it doesn't have any vulnerabilities. Look for this minor, like, you know, gaps. Maybe sometimes uh, developers do make the mistakes. Uh, they do not enable all the security features. So that's why the security issues does arise. So all of this uh, will still be an issue, uh, but uh, I hope you gain some knowledge out of it. If you did, please hit the like button and I'll, I'll come up with like, you know, maybe uh, uh, new scenarios. I'm also planning to go into deep dive into JWT JSON Web Tokens because nowadays a lot of authentication work with the JSON Web Tokens. So I hope you will also get benefit from that. But if you have any other topics, suggestions in mind, uh, please uh, like, you know, please put me in the comment section so I know what you guys are interested about. Any other feedback is also welcome. Uh, I think that's it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.